Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. My name is Michelle, and I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to the podcast. First, I want to start with why. Why did I create this podcast, and why did I choose the topic of profits? Um, For some of you that know me, I have been in the interior design industry since 2000. Um, I started a company called Scarlet Thread Interiors back in 2000 and provided custom interiors, small design projects, mostly focused on window coverings and soft furnishings. And I did that for many, many years. And by doing that, I started recognizing, you know, trouble with how to make money in this industry. We're talking, what, 19 years ago? Things were very different. We didn't share the way that we share today. I didn't know how other people priced in the industry. And so I literally was trying to figure it out myself. The interesting thing was, as I asked other people and met people in the interior design industry, I would ask them, how much can I make? What is possible? Nobody could answer me. And I always thought that was weird coming from a background in software, because of course we knew what we made, we knew what the averages were, we knew how positions were priced, but I couldn't get anybody to give me straight answers. And, and at first I thought, wow, these people are really holding back on me. Nobody's telling me. And then over the years, especially those first few, I realized they weren't holding back. They didn't know. They weren't answering me because they didn't know their answer. They didn't know how much money they were making. They weren't keeping up with it or they didn't know how to interpret the data that they had been given. I've had a company where I made no money, and I've had a company where I made great money. And so I know what that divide looks like. I also understand how it feels in that divide. It's not always great. You know, my story is out there. I'm I'm sure I'll be sharing it in bits and pieces on the podcast. But I started a company out of my home, and I made no money. And I couldn't understand why. And there were so many things that fit into that poor pricing, poor buying decisions, trying to make the customer happy, all at the expense of my own profit, my own sanity, you know, everything else. I'm sure my story is no different than the story of many entrepreneurs, regardless of the industry that they're in. And so over these last 19 years in business, I've learned how to do pricing correctly. I've learned how to make profit, you know, and then what to do with that money. And so my goal in this whole podcast is to help others do the same thing. But, but the biggest thing I will tell you that I've learned on my journey towards profitability is that there wasn't just one answer. And I truly don't believe that any business is a one size fits all. I do think that there are, are great ideas in business that we can all use, great principles, But just like in interior design, we're not doing cookie cutter homes or cookie cutter office spaces. And so there's no reason we should have a cookie cutter business. I can tell you that when I am more profitable, I am happier. Now, money doesn't mean everything and money certainly doesn't make the world, you know, just perfect. But I can tell you that it does relieve stress. And so here are some things as we start our journey together through the Profit is a Choice podcast that I want to mention to you. Profits matter. They do matter. It keeps us in business. It helps us make money. We can do a lot with profits. Being profitable, making money, it's not a one-time event. You know, we might look at our financials once a year, once a month, whatever time frame, but it wasn't one moment that made us profitable. It's a string of moments. And so every choice we make is going to either lead us towards profitability or away from it. We have control to manage our resources, time, money, people, technology. And so part of the podcast is to help us realize what control we have to manage, right? 
Profitability also means more than the dollar. There are other ways to be profitable because sometimes the dollar amount isn't representative of the true profit of the company. So in my last 10 years of sharing and teaching and coaching on pricing and profits, here's a little bit of what I've seen. We all want to be profitable, but we don't always want to make the hard choices that we need to make to help us be profitable. It's almost like um, I would really like to have this kick and body, but do I really want to go spend all the time in the gym and do every single thing I'm supposed to do consistently to do that? Or do I really want to sit home and eat a French fry? You know, sometimes I, what I want, I'm not willing to do what's necessary to attain it. And the same thing happens in our business. And, you know, quite often we don't tie our day-to-day -day choices with the year-end profitability. It's almost like when we're setting goals and, and this year-end profitability maybe becomes this large goal in front of us, we kind of get to the end of the year and we look at it to say, so what just happened? As opposed to working to actively make something happen. We, we kind of relinquish our ownership. We relinquish our control and we just kind of throw everything up and hope it falls out okay. Once in a while, that might work, but by and large, that is not a recipe that you can follow repeatedly so that you can have profits over and over and over. We almost feel like in that scenario that there are things that are happening to us instead of us happening to things. When I learn to switch things in my mind and my business and my ownership and choices, you know, really coming down to the point that whatever state I was in with my business, I owned it. The good, the bad, the ugly. If I was in, you know, a junky place with my financials, that was my, my choices that got me there. If I was in an excellent place, my choices that got me there. Because I'm the owner of my company, as are you. It doesn't mean that, you know, the other people involved didn't play some role, but ultimately, as the owner of the company, we're the ones responsible for the outcome. I also found that in this interior design industry, by and large, we're people pleasers because, you know, quite often we're sitting in someone's home and we're selling to them and we're trying to create a space and an environment that is lovely or beautiful or has this awesome function, you know, or whatever it is we're doing, but we're trying to please them. We're trying to make them feel comfortable and happy or whatever emotion we're looking to evoke. And so because we're looking to please them versus just offering some commodity product, then there's a lot more tied into it. There is a lot of emotion tied into what we do. And in a couple of my interviews, you're going to hear us talk about removing the emotion and when to put the emotion in, when to take it out so that we can think and analyze without the emotion, you know, when it's kind of just a black and white analysis, and when do we put the emotion in so that it works for us and not against us. And so that is a, a, an awesome opportunity for us to discuss how pleasing people can hurt us or help us and how to hold that and, and almost make it an, an accountability practice of what are we doing. You know, I always hear this, oh, I've got to be fair to the customer, fair to the customer. And listen, I'm going to cheer you right on in that because I would never encourage anyone to have or start or run or maintain a business that was not with integrity. However, being fair to the client and, and absolutely unfair to your business is not a recipe for sustainability. What if you could think about profitability, making money, being successful in such a way that you are fair to the client while also being fair to your business, fair to your employees, fair to your own salary needs, fair to the money you're able to bring into your home? You know, our passion goes away when we're not profitable. Time and time and time again, I get business owners who call me for coaching. And the conversation starts like this. I don't care if I never, you know, never choose another sofa for a client. I don't care what paint color they put on the wall anymore. And I'm disgusted by myself because I don't care and I want to care. 
And usually there is something under that where they've not been paid fairly, they've not been profitable, and so now what started off as a business to serve and to pour out for others is a business that feels like they're constantly being taken from. They almost feel pecked to death, like a little bird just pecking. You may feel that and you may know exactly what I'm talking about. And I got to tell you, there's a way out of that. And we're going to look into that all through this podcast. We lose sleep at night and we do resent those we're working with. We are struggling in our mind and then we actually even start producing less product and less service trying to make up for the money that we're not making. And that, that's not going to keep us going. Then we feel guilty because we're not maybe giving the product and service that we want. Or we give the product and service over and over and over. We don't get equitable pay. We don't have this exchange, this, this fair exchange for our time, our talent, our knowledge, our expertise, and the outcomes that we're giving. And it changes the, our sleep patterns. It changes the way we interact with our family and with our friends. And then the business, again, that we created out of passion and out of love. I don't know anybody. This is the truth. I don't know anybody who went into the interior design industry because they were forced to. Not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying in my 19 years, I've never met them. In my 19 years, every single person that I have ever met that has been in this interior design industry is here because they want to be. They're here because... They have a passion to create and to serve and to make something fabulous or beautiful or functioning in a, in a really cool, fun way for the people that they're working with. And so when all of that passion and all of that excitement and all of that love of serving is, is taken away or ripped away because you can't pay your bills or you're not getting a salary or you can't maintain your employee base, you know, it, it changes things. We don't have to sacrifice one for the other. There is a way to do it. There's a way to build and to grow your businesses to maintain profitability. And we're going to talk to companies who have done just that. We have to always maintain focus on the long-term viability. I always tell my clients, you don't want to be that 80s, you know, one-hit wonder where somebody comes to you, you you do this beautiful work for them and then you're gone when they come back because your pricing was too low or, you know, whatever. You can't maintain a business like that. We are trying to create businesses so that we're there to do their first home, their second home, their third home, their children's home, their grandchildren's home. And the only way to do that is by a plan to be profitable. And then lastly, I'll say this. Somehow we mix up being profitable with price gouging or unfair business practices, or greed. And I want to say to you, it, we should be profitable. It is okay. We should give ourselves full permission to make money doing what we do and loving what we do. There is nothing wrong with that because we can build businesses that are wildly profitable, that are also socially conscious, that are done with integrity, that... Um, you know, that are not greed-based. There is nothing wrong with being profitable. I remember one of the first times I talked to um, a female business owner, and she told me that she was under the, I guess, thought process, assumption, feeling that her salary should be enough. And I said to her, but but why could you not be profitable on top of your salary? Because, see, I truly believe, believe that if we have a profitable company, our profits are separate from our salary. It is in addition to being paid a, a fair you know, living wage. And she'd never thought of that. And so then we got to talk about what that meant. But in her mind, her salary should be enough and she should be satisfied with that. And I, I would say that begs the question, why is that enough? When you look at the fact that if we own our company, you know, there is a huge amount of risk that we're taking. Entrepreneurial risk is, is weighty and it's heavy. And there should be something that we're paid for managing all of that. And so here's the conversation that I really want to have with business owners on this podcast. I want to talk about what it means to be consciously profitable. What could that look like or what does it not look like 
I don't want to steer clear of, of the failures. I want to look at the successes. I want to look at the failures in business because as you know, probably the same as I do, I learn so much more when I fail or when I miss the mark or when I make a mistake, you can term it however you want. And I don't think failure is a bad thing. I think failure is a fantastic teacher. And if on this podcast, the only thing you pick up or take away is the ability to take some risk and the, um, the thought process that failure is good for me, then I'll consider my job done. I want to ask this question. What, what have been the pivotal moments in your life or business that led you toward profitability or away? When was that moment? Sometimes it could be a crisis moment. Sometimes it could have been an exciting moment, just a, I'm going to shift my products, shift my services. What is it? What pivotal moment, um, you know, if there was one, can anybody tie back to, to the success or the profit in their company? I believe that profitability is not just about money. And so what other forms does profitability take? How can we look at it, you know, if it's not just about the money? right? We're really just looking at a snapshot of a year. We're just looking at a scorecard, if you will, an amalgamation of every choice when we look at that income statement. But, but what other ways can we be profitable? How do we plan for profit so that it's not an accident? I want us to be able to have a repeatable process. I really think of our businesses. I'm a fan of e -Myth, And while we're not all building franchise models, we can certainly build a recipe. A recipe that we know that if we put these ingredients together in these portions that we're going to have an outcome that we can plan on and I think that's what it means to plan for profit is it going to come out exactly the same every single time maybe not but we also know that we can put things together and, and have an expected outcome I want to find out how other people define profit. Maybe they define it completely differently than I do. And I'd love to be enlightened by how they see it and how they work towards it and how it drives them or how it doesn't drive them. Again, failure and success, this fixed mindset versus a growth mindset, how does that fit in? You know, Carol Dweck has a great book, and she talks about the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Fixed says, I've learned all I can learn. I'm, I'm at the height of what I've got. I really can't learn or, or do or grow anymore. So the resources I have or the resources I have, I better make the best of it. And the growth mindset says, I'm always learning. I'm always gaining in knowledge. I can tackle new things and take on new things. What does our mindset um, do or say about us? And how does it lead us towards or away from profit? That is fascinating to me. How do we choose the right package or offering or service? And how does that impact the money we make? What if we're doing something we don't enjoy? How does that impact profits? What if it is the most profitable thing in our business, the thing we hate to do? How do we handle that? How do we switch our packages and offerings because we hate something and we want to go in a new direction? And how do we bridge that gap between the business I have today and the business I'd like to have tomorrow? I work with a lot of clients who do that. And that is a very rich conversation. How profitable do I need to be to sell my company? What does it profitability look like to be able to retire? Those are, are deeper conversations that have a, a longer lasting impact on the moment that we think we're in. What about our staff, our employees, or our subcontractors? What role does how we make money play and, and who we choose to work with and how they're on, on our team? Does choosing the right subcontractor or the right employee impact our profitability? And if so, how? What about the right employee in the wrong position? What does that do? What about the profitability to say, I want to move out of my home, or I want to buy a space, or I want to rent a, you know, a space? What, how profitable do we have to be to do that? And what do we need to think about so that we can continue to make money in this new business mindset or in this new um, business scenario? How do we interact with our clients better if we're profitable? How does our communication with our clients impact our business if it's negative? 
How does, you know, expressing one negative thought to your client impact the long-term profitability? What about online reviews? How do they impact our profitability? What does it allow us to do in our community or in our world if we have extra money? If we have covered all the expenses of the company, paid fair salaries, and now we have profit, let's talk about the impact to the world at large. How do we get to, to do more to help others or, or to support maybe, you know, something that's near and dear to your heart? What does that look like? How do you impact the lives of others by making money? And what can we do to make all of this happen? Because again, it's not going to happen by accident. So as you can see, the conversation that I hope to have in this podcast is very multifaceted and it can be very deep. So sometimes it may be light and fluffy and airy and enjoyable and other times it's going to be extremely introspective. I'm sure there will be tears and I'm sure there will be laughter. My hope is that this podcast will also be encouraging, engaging, and inspiring because the journey to profitability is paved one step at a time. Planning is key, and we cannot be so tied to the plan that we miss an opportunity. So it's almost that we have to create a plan but then hold it very lightly. I know I am, um, I am a planner extraordinaire. You'll probably hear it as we, as we go through the podcast. I've got lists that have lists that have lists. I like to plan. And I literally, this sounds crazy to some of you, and some of you are going to be like, oh, Michelle, I totally get you. I have to create space for spontaneity. I have to create space for it. Because if I don't, then my first response is to plan, 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 plan. And then I might miss an awesome opportunity if I've not made my heart and mind and ears and eyes open to a new path. And so I want to talk about that with some of you. So what I desire is for each person listening to ask themselves these three questions after each interview. So every time you hear an interview, I would love for these three questions to come to mind. The first is this, how can the lessons that I've heard apply to my business? Some of the lessons you might think I've already done that, check, move on. Some you may think that lesson absolutely does not apply to me. Maybe I don't struggle in that area. But I, I, would, I would encourage you to think broader and deeper. Really ask yourself, is there some way this could fit into my business, even in some, you know, varied way? It doesn't have to be exactly as it's presented on the podcast. The second question that I would love for you to ask yourself is this, what do I need to shift or change to make the changes necessary to be profitable? So the first is, what lessons can I apply? And the second is, and what needs to shift or change for that to happen? What needs to shift or change? And then the last one, am I willing to do that hard work? Again, we know sometimes what we want. We know what's on the other side of fear. We know what we, we have the goal to be, but we're not always committed to do the work to get there. I want you to be just as committed to the process as you are to the outcome. And that's why I ask that question. Are we committed to the process of doing the hard work to get what we want to get? And so that's the podcast. Profit is a choice. You know, my, my hope again is that you will grow in understanding what profitability means. You will grow in your understanding of how you can attain it, that you will sleep better at night, that you will have a business that is sustainable, a business that is profitable, that is um, that allows you to sleep at night without stress. We're all going to have stress, but we'd, I'd really like to remove this one off your shoulders. And a business where you know what your profitability numbers are, you know how to read them, you know what they mean, and you know what they're telling you, and you know it as soon as possible so that you can make the changes. And so I want to encourage you, if you have a profitability success or a failure or an idea, email me. I would love to hear from you and learn from you. My email is Michelle at scarlet 
www.threadconsulting.com. That's Michelle with one L, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, -E, at Scarlet, S-C-A-R-L-E-T, Thread, T-H-R-E-A-D, consulting.com. I hope that I'm able to share some reader mail and tell a bit of your story as we journey together to be profitable. For those of you that are willing, leave us a review on iTunes. I know this is the first podcast, but after you've listened to a few, leave a review. I will send out a Profit First book to the first 10 people who review this podcast on iTunes. So go out there, leave a review, and um, I'll send you a Profit First book and kick you off on your journey to profitability. Exciting times are ahead, and I am so thrilled to be offering this resource for all of us to learn and to remember that profit doesn't happen by accident. Thanks for joining us.